Hey, it's Dougie from Valto, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a real world example of how Copilot can be used. This is a day in the life of a sales lead that is going to be using Microsoft Copilot to maximize sales efficiency using it as an AI assistant. There's going to be four separate examples showing you how our sales lead is using Copilot to actually make their life a lot easier, more efficient and speeding up the process to help improve the sales pipeline. So starting off at 8 a.m., Cassandra needs to prepare for her big pitch to Contoso, her customer. So she summarizes their annual report to learn more about their goals, risks, and financials. So we're gonna do this from Microsoft Copilot inside of Teams. Now, I don't actually have a financial report from, the, from a dummy customer, because this is just an example, but I do have a workshop report so I could say, for example, please summarize this report. And then by using the forward slash and then start typing the customer's name, I can find the workshop report. Clicking enter, this will then give the information to Copilot so it can start preparing a bit of a summary for me. So there we go. Uh, we can see the Co Contoso Sherpa workshop report authored by Jade was modified. Um, so key objectives include creating a central location for information, uh, aligning the internet with organizational objectives and improving HR processes. The report emphasizes the importance of SharePoint design for a user-friendly internet. So we can see here, um, it, it's a really good summary of what that document is. It's just a sample document, so it's got a bit of information in there. But now, wearing our hat back as our sales lead, if this was the financial report, it would give us the key information that we need to know about that customer. We could even do things like saying, um, if we want to know a bit more about the customer, we could say, who is, in this case, let's say Valto um, from the website www.valto.co.uk. Oops. Um, so this would be like simulating what Copilot would know about Valto as a company. Get some bit of information on us just to summarize who we are. So here you go. Valter is um, found on our website. It's a UK based company specializing in Microsoft technologies, particularly SharePoint, Office 365, and Azure. They offer a range of services, including consultancy development, training, and support. So you can see it knows us quite well from there as well. So we could leverage a bit more information about us, what we do, um, um, and, and include that as part of our prep for our meeting. So the next thing Cassandra will want to do is she wants to command Copilot to create a message to confirm the meeting. We can do this from Outlook. We can draft an email to confirm the meeting this afternoon, highlight how excited we are uh, to present the latest product updates and new pricing, uh, and use a formal tone to keep the email uh, concise. So Cassandra opens up uh, a fresh email, and inside of the email, we can now see it says type two, draft with Copilot. So we click on draft with Copilot, and this is where we could type in our prompt. So we could say, uh, she wants to um, please write a message to Joe Bloggs from Contoso, confirming the meeting at um, 3 p.m. this afternoon. Um, I am excited for the meeting please um so there we go so that's probably enough what we need for now then what we can do is we can set the tone of voice by clicking this option here and we can choose either direct neutral casual formal or for some unknown reason microsoft has let us also create it as a poem but in this scenario we want to keep it formal um, it's a new customer that we're working with so we want to make it nice and uh, formal uh, also, the length probably a bit bit longer, just to sort of show uh, it's got a bit more context um, to to this. So, you can say um, we are going to um, present the new proposal, including licenses and any additional services we are proposing. There we go. So then we click on generate. And that's then going to generate us uh, an email that we're um, going to review first. It's it's important that it is Copilot. We are going to essentially be using it as, as a kind of uh, right-hand man that's looking at this with us rather than actually just 
autopilot where it's going to be sending it automatically um, for us. We actually want to check over it before uh, we're going to send it back to the customer. So there we go. It's now created as a response. I'm writing to confirm our meeting at 3 p.m. this afternoon with Joe Bloggs from Contoso. I'm excited for the meeting and I hope uh, you are too. So it's not quite got the gist. Maybe I should have been a bit more specific with my command to say that I'm writing an email to Joe Bloggs, direct the message to Joe Bloggs at Contoso. So the context of the first sentence is a little bit off, but it's not a million miles away. We are going to present our new proposal uh, to Joe, which includes the licenses and additional services we are proposing for Contoso. I think our proposal is very competitive and attractive. Um, so this is where it's kind of this is it's added its own kind of piece. I've not prompted it to do this. Um, it's quite a good idea. I think our proposal is very competitive and attractive, and I'm confident we can persuade Joe to choose us as their partner. Um, I have attached the proposal document to this email for your reference. Please review it and let me know if you have any questions, feedback for the meeting. Thank you for your hard work and dedication to this project. Look forward to seeing you at the meeting and working with you to close this deal. So really good response there. It's had a lot of things in here. We could choose to make any alterations. So if I wanted to say, actually, this is in the context of it should be emailing to Joe Blogs rather than um, sort of maybe this is in the context of emailing a colleague about it. Um, I could do that, but actually I'd probably just change that first sentence myself. Um, you could also choose to edit it by saying, make it longer, make it shorter, make it sound even more formal, um, make it sound more direct, make it more casual, or we could turn it into a poem again. So once we're happy with it though, we can click on keep it. And then there we go. We can put in the, uh, obviously the email address and send that off to our contact. I just wanted to take a, a quick break just to ask a favor from you. If you're enjoying this video uh, and you want to see more content about Copilot, then please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, you, as you can see here, we've got loads of videos here all about Copilot, as well as Dynamics 365, Power App, SharePoint, um, and loads of fantastic materials about Microsoft 365. So go and check out those videos, subscribe to our channel, uh, and obviously always keep looking out for new videos. We, we tend to post them uh, at least every other week, sometimes even once a week. Next, um, Cassandra puts the final touches on the pitch presentation by adding a slide based on the summary of the annual report she had in Copilot. So you can actually choose to either create a PowerPoint completely from scratch using some information. We could choose to add a slide um, to a PowerPoint um, using Copilot, or we could get it to create a document uh, directly from um, a say Word document. So I could use that SharePoint workshop report to create a brand new presentation as a pitch deck for our customer. So all I need to do is go into a brand new PowerPoint. I can um, go into the Copilot option. You can see I can create a brand new presentation about something. So say, for example, I wanted to create a brand new presentation about, let's say, for example, it was SharePoint I was pitching to my customer. I could click on this, say, create a presentation about SharePoint and the importance of SharePoint design, for example. And then that could go off and create that deck automatically for me. Or I could say create a presentation from file, which is what I'm going to do. And I can give it a file as an example, and it can go off and create that for me or I can choose just to add an individual slide about something. So say, for example, I've already got a pitch deck, but I want to add a new slide which conveys the importance of SharePoint design, then I might choose the add a slide option to say, please make a slide that, uh, that describes the importance of user experience and UI inside of an internet. But instead of say, create presentation from a file, click into here, and I'll just start typing the name of the customer. There we've got Contoso SharePoint Workshop. Click on that, then click, um, I enter here. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to sort of comb through all the different files, uh, sorry, all the different pages of the file um, to come up with what it thinks the slides for the document should be. The cool thing I like about it is it starts listing out all of the slides it thinks it's going to create for me as it's drafting and generating um, that document. It's a great way to, to actually understand what it is it's going to include as part of its presentation. You can also see like a little progress bar across the bottom here, which shows how far it is in creating the deck. So there we go. It's now created my deck. Um, it's also saying you can also use designer for adjusting uh, layout. So I could click on this designer option here, and this would give me some great prompts of how it could look. So if I wanted to use a bit more sort of like animation, I could flick to this or maybe something like this. So you can get a, 
a load of different kind of designs with this. Of course, we could also choose to change the, the colors, go to design, I could change this to, to be more like, um, let's just change the, the style completely. Uh, let's change it to maybe something like this. Um, so then obviously this looks awful <laughs> compared to what it just was. So I'm actually going to go back, but you can choose to change the colors. I'm not a PowerPoint specialist, but you can choose to sort of change the, the layout, the theme, the colors, things like that, or apply your brand colors over the top of the, the PowerPoint. Then what I suggest you do is you go through the, the PowerPoint, look at the slides, which ones you'd want to keep. So actually agenda is probably a good idea. An introduction is a good idea. Maybe the workshop details, hmm, probably don't need to actually need to know when that was. Attendees is a good idea. Um, key kind of objectives and things like that. But you can see it actually brings through loads of information from the, the workshop report, including tables and images. And um, it understood as part of the workshop report who the stakeholders were and, and put together a table of those people as well. So this is really useful and will really speed up that presentation part of a sales leads day. Then the final thing we're going to do is um, it's time for the pitch and Cassandra can focus on her presentation knowing Copilot is taking notes. She commands Copilot to list the questions asked so she can be sure everything gets answered during the call. Um, so we can use um, the kind of recap feature of Teams to tap into Copilot to ask it questions like, was there any questions that had not been answered during uh, this presentation? So again, I don't have a real sales pitch um, video that I can use. Obviously, um, uh, I can't, can't just randomly pick a sales call. But what I can do is I could use a recent um, webinar that we put together that we use through Teams. So we run um, a fire and rescue forum where we get all the kind of fire rescues from the UK together and talk to them about different products from Microsoft and what's coming up and helping them um, get the best from Microsoft 365. So with this, you can see we do have a rough recap uh, inside of Teams, um, but I can also leverage Copilot to ask it something like, um, please list any questions that did not get answered during the meeting. So there we go. So we can ask it, um, was there any questions that did not get answered during the meeting? Based on the trash set, though, no explicit questions mentioned that were unanswered during the meeting. The discussion primarily focused on the introduction and benefits of model driven apps. I says, um, OK, so please list out any questions that had been asked. Please do not include the names of the people that asked the questions. So you can see here. Um, I'm not asking to say, OK, well, obviously we did a great job. We actually answered all of the questions that we got asked. Um, so actually a couple of examples here. So does anyone have any questions around the HR scenario? Does anyone have any questions around the example model driven, driven apps? Um, so these are the questions asked by Hugh to gaze at the audience and gather feedback on model driven app. Um, examples HR scenario presented. So you got here some of the questions that have been asked during that meeting. We probably need to be a bit more specific with the types of questions. So we could say, um, was there any questions about a particular section of the meeting that came up? Um, and in that way, we would know um, what areas, um, wearing our hat again as a sales lead, what areas that we would potentially need to improve or provide follow up information to our customer after the meeting. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do like and subscribe. If you need any help with uh, Copilot or discover how Copilot for Microsoft 365 can streamline the day of sales leads and help them deliver strong sales presentations to, in, to an important customer. Um, so as a Microsoft partner, Valto, we can help you accelerate Copilot adoption by conducting employee training sessions. We have fixed priced adoption strategies and plans, uh, which all starts with a uh, discovery and proof of value workshop. Um, if you would like to speak to us about that today, we do offer a free consultation on Copilot to discuss how your organization specifically can get the best return on investment from it. Email us at hello at valto.co.uk or go to valto.co.uk forward slash YouTube and you can fill out a contact form there as well. Thank you very much for your time and we look forward to hearing from you soon.